Welcome to Milan Recording Studios. My name is James Pavel Shakras, and in today's video, I have a really cool comparison between two cool keyboards. On the bottom, we have the Kawai MP11, which is Kawai's flagship stage piano. It has an excellent build quality, a really, really great piano sample. There's actually several really nice ones in here, as well as a few other cool sounds. And I did I mention it has an amazing build quality. I really love the feel and the fit and finish of this keyboard is excellent. On the top, we have the Roland RD2000, which is also, I believe, Roland's flagship stage piano. It has a pretty good build quality, a absolutely massive amount of sounds. It has one 1113 or somewhere in that range of sounds which is probably about six times as many as this keyboard has so if you're looking for a keyboard that has an absolute load of sounds then this one might be an option for you I, before I dive into these reviews, I did want to mention very briefly that this video kind of couldn't have been done without the help of Benjamin Kim from Kim's Pianos because he actually loaned me this MP11 SE completely free of charge, which is really awesome. Thank you, Benjamin Kim. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell to be informed of all of my future uploads. This video is part of a keyboard comparison series where I review and compare many of the top brands of stage pianos on the market today. So if that sounds cool to you, you might want to think about subscribing. And if if you do that thank you very much so let's get on with the review I think I'm going to start off with the Kawai MP11 SE and I think I might just dive in right into playing because I really love playing the MP11 SE. It has an absolutely fantastic action and the default piano sound on here, the SK Concert Grand sound, is really, really amazing. It's rich and warm and clean and clear in the treble and rich and beautiful in the bass. It really, really sounds good and the action in here, which is Kawai's grand feel action, is one of the best that you can buy today in the stage market, uh, the stage piano market. It feels really, really great. It has that substantial feel that a real piano has. It doesn't feel light and cheap like some stage pianos can. It's a really great action, so I figured I'd just dive right into it and play a couple of pieces on this, and then play the same couple of pieces on this. I hope you enjoy.
So hopefully you guys enjoyed hearing those couple of pieces on the MP11 SE and the Roland RD2000. The first piece, which is a piece that I wrote specifically to test out pianos, is a pretty short one, so I decided to play the entire thing on both keyboards. The second one, which is a classical piece by Eric Satie, was a longer piece and also a rather repetitive one, so I decided to split it up between the two keyboards to make it a little bit less boring. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, and hopefully you guys could hear some differences between the Roland RD2000 and the MP11 SE. What I'm hearing is that the MP11 SE has a rich, warm, and a very realistic tone. It's one of the most realistic sounding stage pianos on the market today that I have found. It sounds really, really great, and I absolutely love the sound of it. The RD2000 isn't bad, but it does have a, a brighter kind of a tone, a bit of a thinner sound, and a rather more artificial sound. The one note that I'm finding that really stands out to me on the RD2000 is this A right here. It sounds particularly thin. Maybe that's just me. Maybe it's just where I'm sitting in the room and my ears today, but sounds extra bright and kind of extra unrealistic. Now, the bass on these two pianos, you can also hear a difference in as well. If I play a couple of bass chords on the RD2000, and I play the same thing on the MP11 SE, You can hear that the MP11 SE is deeper, richer, and more full sounding. It's very warm. The, MP the RD2000 is rather cold and shallow sounding. This is very warm and fuzzy and really nice. The bass on this almost reminds me of maybe like a, a 20 year old concert grand that's been used a lot and has the original hammers and they're very hard, whereas this one here reminds me of a newer concert grand that still has the soft factory spec hammers that are still really gorgeous and soft and pillowy. The mid range on these two pianos also has, this one has that brighter, thinner sound and this one has a more warm, full sound. Check this out. Let's start down here. I cheated a bit and went into the treble because I love the treble sound on this piano. I'll do the same up here too, to keep it fair. That piece is such a beautiful song that you can play it on most anything and it will sound really good. So that actually made the RD2000 sound really good there. But I'm sure that you guys still could hear a difference in that mid-range. This is very warm. Whoops, wrong pedal. And this is not. Now, the... There's a few different ideas between what makes a good stage piano, and one of the leading ideas is that a brighter piano sound is more beneficial because in a live situation, a lot of the times there's a lot of other instruments going on. Many times, especially if you're using a keyboard, you're not going to be the solo instrument. If you're playing a real piano in Carnegie Hall, then yeah, you're going to be the only person there. But if you're playing a digital keyboard, chances are you're going to be competing with a drummer, a vocalist, a guitarist, a bassist. Sometimes there's multiple guitarists. Depending on the type of music you're doing, there might be, you know, jazz instruments, half a brass band, stuff like that. So the reason that pianos a lot of the times in live situation are bright is that they can cut through the mix and be heard when they want to be. If the pianist does have a solo, then they can hit the keys a bit louder and that really bright piercing tone can still be heard through the mix. The audience can hear it and if it's being recorded, the microphones can pick it up as well. Kawai has taken a bit of a different approach with the stage piano motto. Many people, I don't know if motto was the right word there to use, but you know what I mean. Many. Um, 
many manufacturers go with a brighter sound that's a bit less realistic. Kawhi has gone with a warmer sound that is much more realistic. It really, really sounds gorgeous and it's really beautiful. It's really fun to play and the action on it is also absolutely amazing. As I said, this feels a lot like a grand piano, but to be honest with you, RD the Roland's action isn't all that far behind. It does have a also a very good feel. It does have wooden keys, as you can maybe see there. They are wooden sided keys. That one's a Kind of a weird gray color actually but they are wood you can see that one's a little bit of a different color that one is so these are wooden sided keys that one's got some dark grain behind it and these here are also wooden keys as well you can just see how sensitive this action is because i pushed these keys down with the same the same force that i pushed these ones down and they sounded very easily so this action is very easy to play the weight of this one is kind of similar to the mp11 i think it's a tad bit lighter than the grand feel action and one thing one of my um, commenters, my followers, asked me to do was to do a single note trill on the Roland RD2000 because apparently, according to them, the previous version of this action was very difficult to do a repeated note on very quickly. The MP11 SE doesn't seem to have any problems with it, and I'm testing out this action as well, and it doesn't seem to either. Let me demonstrate it. I'm going to use my favorite A up here to do so. Those type of things aren't something that I usually do, so I'm not the greatest at doing a single note trill or a repeated note, whatever you want to call it, but I'm not feeling any serious difference between these two keyboards when it comes to doing that. They feel both about the same, and the fact that they were a little bit uneven is simply because I almost never do those in music. I rarely play classical music that uses that, so I don't get a lot of practice doing those. But I wanted to answer that question because somebody asked that, how well does this do repeated notes? And I don't think it does them much worse or much better than the MP11 SE. I think that particular aspect is about the same. Now, I did mention earlier in the video that the MP11 SE had an excellent build quality, and I believe the word I used to describe this was good or something along those lines, because I feel that the build quality on the RD2000, while it isn't terrible, it isn't amazing either. The Kawhi MP11 SE has an almost all metal construction, and the metal that is used on it feels very thick and very durable. It has big, heavy-duty wooden sides. They're painted black, but I do believe they're wood. On Kawhi's website, it says they're wood, and they don't feel like plastic. The top here is metal. It's very thick metal. It's very durable-feeling metal, and the front is as well. The underside of this is plastic, but it feels like a very durable plastic, and I don't think you'd have any issues with this thing getting damaged if something bad was to happen with it. Now, the RD2000 also does use metal. It does have metal here, and it does have a plastic underside, which also feels quite sturdy. When I slap it, I can feel a little bit of resonance there. You can't hear it, but I can feel it kind of shaking a bit. This one doesn't do that. The top of this is metal, I believe. I don't, I don't get as quite of a high-quality vibe from this, but I don't get a low-quality vibe either. I just feel that it's a little bit different. The sides of this, though, are plastic as well, and they are reasonably cheap sounding and feeling. They don't feel incredibly premium. And what's kind of interesting is there isn't a massive price difference between these two keyboards either. It's the same over here. This side over here is plastic as well. When I slap it, I do kind of feel a bit of vibrations there. And another thing that's kind of odd about the RD2000 is that it's actually asymmetrical, as you can see. So you've got a gigantic huge area over here for a pitch bend wheel that I honestly never use. I don't really use pitch bend wheels all that much at all. And so as someone who never uses them, I find it hilarious that they dedicated so much space to a pitch bend wheel, but oh well, what are you gonna do? So over here, it's very, very wide. And over here, as you can see, this cheek block, which is what they're called on real pianos, is very, very thin. There's just a small little piece of plastic that's been put in there, which means that the RD2000 kind of looks a bit asymmetrical. The keys are way farther over to this side than they are over here. And it's also a bit wider than the MP11 SE by about a couple of inches, which is something interesting to note. Something else I wanted to mention 
is the screen. The, both of these, I believe, use the same type of screen. And while I'm not a huge tech nerd, I believe the name is LCD or LED screens. They're not the new OLED technology. I think they were the previous version behind that or something. They're a little bit dated looking, but I do believe that the screen on the MP11 SE is better looking. Now, the reason many people like the OLED displays, like the one that's used on the Nord Stage 3, is because no matter what angle you look at the screen from, it's always the same colors. And that actually is pretty much the case with the MP11 SE, at least when it comes to from this angle. I do believe if you look at it from really strange angles, the colors do change. If I go like this, the colors get a bit darker. If I sit back down here, the blue background gets a little bit lighter. But when I'm sitting here, I can see it. If I do something weird and lean all the way back here, I can still pretty much read it. The colors didn't change all that much. However, on the RD2000, while it has a bigger screen, not only do the menus feel a lot more cramped because the text is smaller and there's a lot more going on there, but right now, the colors are completely inverted from where they're supposed to be. The background is like this white color and the text is a blue color. If I stand up, my head might go off screen, but right about now, it's where it's supposed to be. So from standing up to sitting down, the colors completely invert. And right about here, if I'm sitting completely straight up, like you normally would, especially if you're playing the top keyboard, the screen is virtually impossible to read, especially if I go into a menu. You guys can't see that, unfortunately, from there. But if I go into a menu, I virtually cannot read the text at all. Whereas on here, if I go into a menu, like I said, even if I'm back here or up here, I can still read the menu and it doesn't feel as cramped, even though the screen is nowhere near as wide. So that is something interesting to note. Both of these keyboards do have a rather small and dated looking screen, but I prefer the one that's on the MP11 SE to the one that's on the RD2000. So if you're looking to get an RD2000, I don't recommend putting it on a second tier. The MP11 SE is very heavy, so you'd want a relatively sturdy second tier to put that on, but the Nord, I mean, sorry, not the Nord, the Roland RD2000 definitely shouldn't go on a second tier unless you're gonna be standing and playing it. If you're gonna be sitting and playing it on the second tier, it really doesn't belong there because it's very hard to see. The RD2000 has a number of various sounds, and one of them that's actually surprisingly good is the Tyne electric pianos. One thing I do want to note is that they are way louder than everything else. So right now I've got the volume around 11, so I'm going to turn it down to like 10 and do a little test here and make sure that it's all good to go. I think that's good. So that is one thing to note. I don't know why literally every keyboard ever has these huge volume differences between the sounds. Like the organ is a little bit understandable because there's the drawbar controls. And so you, if you had it so that for the full organ was the same as the piano, then if you just had one or two drawbars out, you couldn't hear it, especially if you're combining instruments. That I can kind of see, but why the road sounds always have to be like way louder than the piano sounds, I don't, I don't know why. It's always a thing. It's really weird. But... The road sounds on here are actually surprisingly good. I'm not a massive fan of the piano sound on here, but I am a pretty big fan of the road sound on here. I'm also a big fan of the road sound on here. I think they're two of the best keyboard road sounds that you can find without buying a real Rhodes. So let me give you guys a little bit of a demo of both of those, and I hope that you enjoy.
So that was a little bit of a look at the different road sounds that the MP11 SE and the RD2000 have. Now both of them have a bunch of different road sounds. This one here has at least three. I think there's a couple more in the modern sound category as well. And this one here has a bunch of them as well. It's got loads of different variants with different effects and all kinds of stuff on them. But the default one is, in my opinion, the best one. And so that's why I'm comparing the default sound of both of these pianos to each other. So I just I just wanted to discuss a few of the little differences that I'm hearing between the two. This one sounds a little bit more woody in this kind of a register. That's a bit of a weird word to describe it, but... This one has a more pure sound that's a little bit more authentic to the real roads, but this one isn't that bad either. Especially in this range right here, they're actually pretty close. Once again, this one here I think is a little bit thinner sounding than this one, but the overall tone isn't terribly far away from this one. Now, the bass end of it is where it gets a little bit rougher. I believe below a certain note, it starts to sound really gravelly on here. I forget which note that is, but... Right here, I think it's this low A flat. That hear that weird tremolo at the very beginning of the note? This one doesn't have it. This one does. And then below here, it gets really weird. Sounds very strange. Down here, a lot more real. It has some strange little high partials in there like the Fender Rhodes kind of has sometimes. And when you play octaves in the low bass, every now and then one of them sounds like it's ever so slightly out of tune, which is a really nice touch if that is the case. Because sometimes when the tie, when the hammer hits the tine on a real Rhodes, sometimes it alters the pitch and that's just kind of a, a little quirk about those keyboards is that sometimes when you play them one note or so is ever so slightly out of tune and this has that in there. Hear that? It's kind of neat. This one I don't think does that. And the bass end in this is a lot less realistic sounding. It sounds more like a synth than this does. But this range of the RD2000 really isn't all that bad and the treble on it also I don't think was too terrible either. So that is the road sound on here, and this also has a number of other sounds as well. Again, this has 1,113 sounds, so if you're looking for a keyboard with a load of sounds, this would be a good option for you. Although I do tend to think that, especially between these two keyboards, Kawai went with the approach of, let's put a few high quality sounds in there, and Roland said, let's just put all of the sounds in there. That's the approach that I feel like these two keyboard companies took. Now, what's kind of funny is in the clavinet section on the Roland RD2000, there are other non-clavinet sounds, such as mallet instruments. And one of the sounds that I actually think is considerably better on the, at least I did before, and I haven't ever played these side by side until now, so I might change my mind here. But when I was playing the RD2000 before, I felt like the marimba sound on here was surprisingly good out of all things. The bass end of it, has a lot of the fundamental tone in there, so if you play the low bass, hear that low whoom after you hit the note. So then that means that you're actually playing an E rather than just those woody high upper tones. So it actually still sounds a bit like music down here. Hear what I mean? There still is that little whoom, but the overtones are a lot more loud. And most marimbas I think will bottom out around that note. I think, where does my M500 bottom out? I think it might be this note, I think is where the bottom note on that is. But this is the marimba sound on here. And up here. The bass sound on it though is a little bit more realistic than on the MP11 SE. Now, another thing I wanted to mention about these two organs, I mean these two keyboards, I was going for the organ section, that's why I called them organs, is that this has organ sounds and this does not. 
This keyboard does not have any organ sounds whatsoever. So if you like Hammond organs, this doesn't have any tone wheel sounds. If you like combo organs, this doesn't have any Vox Continental or Farfisa organ sounds. If you like pipe organs, this has no pipe organs. And if you're one of those odd people like me who likes reed organs, this doesn't have any reed organ sounds either. It has no organ sounds whatsoever. This, however, has all of that, but they are rather poor. Now, you do have tone wheel, I mean, drawbar controls on here, but unlike some keyboards where when you're on an organ sound, you can just move the drawbars to select them, that's not how it works on here. You have to go into the tone designer button, and yes, you'd have to do this in a live situation too, and then you can have drawbar controls. As you can see, when I move these sliders, they're moving these lights kind of like you would have on an organ, so you can move all of them in, and nothing will play except for the percussion which is on. Now, right now, I cannot see the screen at all. So to turn off the percussion, I either have to stand up or just guess where the sound is, and I think it's on there. So there we go. So you have drawbar controls, but you have to go into that tone designer menu. And to activate the Leslie speed switch, like many, all, most Hammond organs had, you in the tone designer menu, you can use the pitch bend. Although the Leslie speed is way too fast, I don't think any real Leslie ever sounded that fast. The slow speed is about right, but the fast speed is way too fast. So, but when you're outside of the tone designer menu, if I hit exit here a couple times, the, p the pitch bend becomes a pitch bend. This should always be the Leslie speed switch. So when you're outside of the tone designer menu, the only way to turn on the Leslie is with this knob, which actually turns on all of the draw bars too. Which is dumb. That's really dumb. So the only way to activate the Leslie without turning on any other drawbars is specifically in this menu. If you go into one of the sub menus in the tone designer menu, you can't use this as a Leslie speed switch anymore. It's so weird and quirky and specific and really annoying. And also the tones of the organs as well aren't the greatest. If I were looking for a keyboard that has really great organ sounds, this wouldn't be my first choice. In fact, it would probably be kind of near the bottom of the list, but above this, because this doesn't have any organ sounds at all. So specifically for organ sounds, this would be at the bottom. This might be the second one or maybe the third one up. But for overall general playability, I would really prefer the MP11 SE. Having said that, the Roland RD2000 does have a place in the world. That's why it exists. The RD2000, I think, would be really, really great, at least when compared to the MP11, for a gigging musician someone who's going to be traveling around every night or every other night or something like that, and they're going to be carrying a keyboard with them. This, I think, rate is in the range. It weighs in at about maybe 50 or so pounds. It feels a bit heavier than like the CP88, which is like 40 something pounds, and it's a lot lighter than this, which is around 70 something. So I don't know the exact weight of this, but it's not as heavy as this one. So carrying this around really wouldn't be as bad as carrying this around, because it is like 73 or 75 pounds. It's really, really heavy. So this is a bit lighter, and it's also a bit brighter than this. It's one of the brightest sounds that I know of, actually, I think. It has a very bright piano sound, as I demonstrated earlier, which would be very good for cutting through the mix, whether you're playing rock music or jazz or pop music. The piano sounds on here would definitely be able to cut through the mix. This one here, it does have a brightness. If I exit the menu and go back to the piano sounds, there is a brilliance knob right here that you can use to turn up the brilliance, but I don't think it would be quite as bright as this. But there are other sounds on both of these, so if you wanted a slightly different piano timbre, you could choose that as well. Before I leave this video, I did want to mention one more thing about both of the piano sounds on here, and that is that the sympathetic resonance is way more realistic on the MP11 SE than on the RD2000. I really should have mentioned this earlier, but if I hold down the pedal on the MP11 SE and I play some notes up here in the treble, let's do some stuff in D major. Hopefully you guys can hear all of that resonance, and if you can't, I will turn it up a little bit later in the video. If we go here into the... I don't need to go into the tone designer for this, but I will anyway, um, just so I can easily change it. If I play the same type of thing on here, you'll hear that it's a little bit different. There we go. You should hear better now.
So what I'm going to do now is turn the string resonance way up on both of these keyboards. To do that, in here I go into this menu. String resonance is right up here, and crank that all the way up to 10. So it's on 10 on both of these instruments. Probably a little bit not so realistic. Let's try it again to really demonstrate it for you. You guys hear that? Kind of sounds like reverb. Let's try it on here. Put the pedal down. I always do that. I always use the wrong pedal. I got two pedal units down here and it gets confusing sometimes. First of all, the 10 on here is way more intense than the 10 on here, but did you notice anything different? This sounded a lot more muddy. And that's because I'm pretty sure that Roland is using the exact same sound sample for every note that you play. Check this out. If you have a good speaker set or a good pair of headphones, you can probably hear all that extra noise behind the note that I'm playing, and that's trying to be sympathetic resonance. In a real acoustic piano, when you have the pedal down and you play a note, many of the other strings will vibrate in sympathy, in harmony with the note that you're playing. And on a real piano, it doesn't sound quite like that. On the few highest notes, you do, you do hear some of that noise, but it sounds ever so slightly different for every piano. Let's try it out on the MP11 SE, and I think you should be able to hear what I mean. As I said, you do hear some of that noise that is kind of the same for every note, but after that noise dies away, you also hear the remnants of the main note singing out into the rest of the piano as well. Hear that? It's kind of like reverb in a big hall. Let's try it up here. the same for every single note. That's not how string resonance works. That's not how you do it, Roland. So Roland kind of messed up on a couple of things. The Leslie speed is way too fast, although you can edit that and make it a bit more realistic sounding. But why it sounds about as fast as like a helicopter rotor is a little bit weird to me. And the string resonance on here is pretty inaccurate and kind of like, if you can't do it right, why even put it in the keyboard to begin with? However, having said that, you wouldn't ever hear the string resonance when you're in a live performance. So it's really not that big of a deal, but the reason I am making a big deal out of it is because as a recording piece of equipment, the MP11 SE is a lot more realistic than the Roland RD2000. This, I don't truly think has a place in my studio, but as I said, it does have a place out in the real world. It does have a place as on stage for a gigging musician, that piano sound is really bright, it would cut through the mix. The action is also really good, so you'd be able to play basically anything you wanted on it, and it would be good. The one downside with it, though, is that it doesn't have a music desk or a place to put a music desk. So if you wanted to have sheet music, you'd have to put a separate stand behind the instrument. So that kind of eliminates this being a good practice keyboard. You could use it as one, but it would be a little bit less convenient than if it had a built-in music stand and came with one but oh well, what are you gonna do? There is also a triple pedal unit that is available for this one, but it doesn't come with it. Instead, it comes with a single pedal unit, which honestly is pretty adequate. I do like it. The MP11 SE not only comes with a high quality music desk, but it comes straight out of the box with a triple pedal, pedal unit, which is nice. So if you own a piano and you're looking to keep some time off of it because you just paid a lot of money for it and you wanna keep it nice for a long time, having an MP11 SE would be a pretty good way of doing that because it feels a lot like a piano as far as it's close to a piano as you're going to get with a stage model keyboard. So if you have a real piano and want to keep some time off of it, or if you don't have a piano and you simply want to practice the piano, this would be a good option for you because the action feels really great. And it also has that triple pedal unit, so if you want to play some classical music that uses those other two pedals, you can. So I think that's actually about it, that I wanted to talk about the Kawai MP11 SE and the Roland RD2000. I really, really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and that you found it interesting and informative. If you did, you might want to think about giving this video a like and maybe also checking out my channel. I have a lot of cool videos of pianos, keyboards, organs, and all kinds of other cool keyboard instruments. And I'm also working on this keyboard comparison series where I take a look at many of the top brands of keyboards made today, stage pianos, 
and comparing them both against each other and also against the vintage equipment that they replicate. So how I was talking about the comparison between these two road sounds, I'll also be doing a video where I compare many of these keyboards against a real 1973 Fender Rhodes suitcase model, which is actually right behind here. I don't know if you can see it, but it is back here behind me. So that is going to be really cool as well. So if you think that's going to be cool, make sure to go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell. And before I go, I wanted to give one last shout out to Benjamin Kim for loaning me this keyboard. Yes, I'm mentioning his name a lot and you might be wondering why and no, it's not because he's paying me. I didn't get a single penny from Mr. Kim for uh, using and making videos on this keyboard. The reason I'm mentioning him so much and the reason I'm so thankful and grateful for him donating this to me temporarily is because I did contact many of the manufacturers that you're seeing here and none of them wanted to loan me a keyboard for the videos. So when I contacted Kim though, he happily gave me a keyboard. So that's why I'm so thankful because this video kind of couldn't have been done without him. I would have had to use the previous version of this, the MP11, which I do own myself, and I would have gotten a lot of complaints about that it wasn't the updated model. And this does have a few upgrades like that default piano sound that are better than the original MP11. The action though is the same, and if you find a used MP11, the action will be the same, and the pedal unit will be also be a triple pedal and it'll also have that nice music stand so a used mp11 would also be a pretty good option if you're looking for a practice keyboard as well but the new one does have a few upgrades that default piano sound is a lot nicer than on the original mp11 and it's a really great keyboard so i really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and if you did maybe go check out my channel and if you do i will see you in the next video goodbye